Well, it is preg checking day. It's time to find out if any of these cows have got calves growing inside them. We still don't have our own chute yet, so we borrowed this one from the vet clinic and got it set up inside of our barn. And it's time to find out if our AIing in December and our cleanup bull standing around the last couple months got anything done. If you've been here for a while, you know that we had really bad luck this summer. The bull that we purchased and had tested, something went wrong with him and he didn't get anything done this summer. We had all of our cows were open in October. So today we're a little bit nervous, but a little bit excited to get these cows through and see if we're gonna have calves this fall. Stay tuned to see how it goes. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. While we get set up and ready to go here, let me explain to you why we chose today as the day to preg check these cows. We are using an ultrasound machine to detect if these cows are pregnant, but we are also using that ultrasound machine to figure out how far along they are in their pregnancy. And the reason that matters is we want to save heifers back out of the bulls that we artificially inseminated the cows to. We did this on the 12th of December, which has been 70 days ago. And then the cleanup bull showed up two weeks after that. So at 70 days post artificial insemination, it's pretty easy to detect with the ultrasound machine whether this calf was conceived via AI or whether it was conceived 21 or 42 days later with the cleanup bull. That's why we're doing it today. I hope you enjoy this video. You're going to get to see a little ultrasound footage to see what the vet is looking at. And we're going to find out how we did with breeding round two. We have a pregnancy? We have a pregnancy. Is it a Gelby or an Angus? Uh, it's Holstein. Oh my gosh. <laughs> black, you and, black and white. Uh, that's probably an AI. Alright. You want to see it? I do. I'd love to. And there's a scale over there. Okay. Here you can take a picture of it. So the TD is thoracic diameter and there's a 12 and a 10. So you're basically measuring chest circumference with that. So okay. you can see that the length of that line is pretty close to the length of the whole thoracic chest, the chest there. Okay. So it's about 10 weeks, but you're 70 days, right? Yeah, that is awesome. Butter out. It is. Yep. Come on. Got her, eh? This is, this is dad's cow. AI, Dad. Wait. You're gonna race. Good job, Josh. The rest of these are gonna The rest of these are gonna hit it a little faster. Alright, AI Tina. I like this shoe, Josh. Later on in this video, I'll give you an up-close look at how we get the cows into the runway once we bring them into the barn. But one thing is for sure, we don't want to bring more cows into the barn than we can fit in the runway all at once. Because if they have to stand in a pen inside the barn in a small area and watch all of this happen, they get really worked up and concerned. But if they're single file in the runway, one ahead of the other, they're usually pretty calm. So that's the way we do it. A few of these older cows have gotten pretty smart and the only way you can get them in, you gotta take this pipe behind their back leg and basically lift their foot up and make them take that last step forward. Otherwise, they'll just stand there all afternoon. She's awesome with AI. That's great. AI, Tina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if the shoot isn't anchored, something when she goes into it it's it's gonna move <laughs> yeah she's bull bread bull bread on 151 okay she's done hey she's long ain't she
So when the image starts to come into focus here, you can just see how much smaller that calf is than the other one we were looking at. This one's only about 40 days along. Come on, girl. What are you thinking about, huh? You can't go up there. Come on, girl. This is, this is my favorite cow. Right, actually, it was your second rate. Well, it is what it is. 140. You can tell she's not a big cow, she, her frame, she, but she routinely has the biggest calf at weeding time and at, like her calf in the feedlot is crazy. 140 is definitely curious. Though. Yeah, I see that. I'm going to kick her out. She's going to get in there. Would you like, why don't you just go? <laughs> what are you thinking about? Oh, get out of there. She's, <laughs> she's going to eat his soap. <laughs> you get out? Go. Go eat the hay. Oh, they can't because I locked it. They're locked out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, she sees these buckets. AI. AI? Oh, I'm very happy about that. Is it a heifer? Okay. It's a little, the really bright lines right there on the top what? and on the bottom. Oh, really about the 1210. Yeah, they're going right and left there. Yep. Yeah. And then you can just see the ribs on the bottom a little bit too and everything in between that's like liver and lung. Very nice. Good job. Well, that's it. I gotta say I'm really satisfied with the way this chute worked in here. Just getting the wheels back on it now. Well, look at my moose of a brother is pushing it out by himself. He has an actual backup camera. <laughs> Release the lock and we might actually have to crank it down just a little bit all the way out. So I don't know how well you could see what we were doing back here, how we were actually getting the cows into the runway. So come back here and I'll show you what we did with the gates back here and how we set this up. It worked really well. So first of all, we cornered the cows right here in the corner of the lot around the bale feeder. Uh, they had been out of hay since that morning. So we built a small pen with the red gates around the bale feeder here so that they wouldn't have far to go and we could get them to come right into this doorway. So we'd bring three cows in the door and they'd go this way. And while they were headed up there, we would swing this gate around like this and chain it up against the old head gate. Now a cow's natural instinct when they get into an unfamiliar place, especially if they can't go any further, is to turn around and try to go right back where they came from. So when they get up against this wall and realize they can't go any further, they naturally turn around and try to go right back out that door that we brought them in. But since we've already swung this gate around, and chained it up against the old head gate, their natural place to go to escape is right up that alleyway. And they did it without any problem at all. Like never once did we have a cow decide she didn't wanna go up that alley. And once the first cow would head up the alley, the rest of them were all gonna follow. So at that point, one of us or two of us would hop over the gates here and pull this gate shut and chain it up against the head gate post. And then they couldn't back out because if they back straight back up the alley, they just back into the old head gate. And then we've got a few different spots along here where we slip a two by four across behind their butt in front of those vertical two by sixes. And that just keeps them from backing up. I was very impressed with how this thrown together system worked. This was not my original plan. My original plan was to bring the cows in that doorway next to the chute and then have them come down to this end and realize that they couldn't get out and then turn them up the alleyway to go back that way. But when I got the vet chute set up in here, it was obvious that there was not enough room between the doorway and the side of the vet chute to get the cows to willingly come into the barn that way. 
So the day of preg checking, we had to amend the plan and bring them in the back door. And this worked fantastically. The other great thing about the way we set this up is I didn't actually have to demolish the old junky chute that I built. The head gate's still there. I can just put those, uh, put the short split gates back that we use. It won't be a big deal to just be able to run this thing the opposite direction and run heifers through it in the old head gate if I end up having to. I'm impressed. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but this system worked well. Well, it feels really good to know that every single one of those cows is pregnant. That is fantastic news. What a great day. And that five of them actually are AI'd, and those five are ones that we really wanted to keep heifers out of. So I'm sure they'll all have bulls now. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. They're all pregnant. We're excited about that. We're going to try fall calving for the first time ever. Don't know how excited I am about that, but a lot of people do it and a lot of people love it. Hey, I appreciate you riding along this week. Next week, uh, we're going to be warming the weather up and working on the planter and probably tapping some maple trees. So I hope you come along for that. I hope you enjoyed yourself. As always, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.